I bought this book for its beautiful cover, its award, but why did I bother reading it? Hi and welcome to my channel. If you're new to this channel, I'm Oisten and I'm trying to become a bookworm. In this video we'll be talking about this book, Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is a very hyped book. It's one of those covers you see everywhere you go in the booktuber or bookstagram or booktalk community. I read on the back of the book and I thought, ah, this book doesn't really speak to me. But then again, it has won an award for Women's Prize for Fiction for 2020. I thought so many people can't be wrong. And today I'm going to discuss if they were. The book was published in 2020 and it has around 380 pages. On a summer's day in 1596, a young girl in Stratford-upon-Avon takes her bed with a sudden fever. Her twin brother Hamnet searches everywhere for help. Why is nobody home? Their mother Agnes is over a mile away in the garden where she grows medicinal herbs. Their father is working in London. Neither parent knows that Hamnet will not survive the week. Hamnet is a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright, a boy whose life has been all but forgotten, but whose name was given to one of the most celebrated plays ever written. If I were to describe this book, I would say that it's, it's a historical family drama, which Shakespeare is in the middle of. There are three generations discussed in this book. You have Shakespeare's father and then Shakespeare's kids, Hamnet being one of the kids. You jump back and forth in time in this book. If you have knowledge about Shakespeare and Hamlet, I think many of the things in the book are known to you uh, before you start reading this book. And of course the book fictionalizes out from Hamlet and Shakespeare's own life. The book also says a lot about Hamlet's death and how the parents deal with his death. I'll give you one of the quotes that stuck with me from this book. Agnes repeats the sound back to her. She finds herself frequently unable to look away from the child, to remove her gaze from her daughter's face. Why would she ever want to behold anything else, when she could be taking in the sight of Suzanne's ears, like the pale folds of roses, the wing-like sweep of her tiny eyebrows? Agnes repeats the sound back to her. She finds herself frequently unable to look away from her child. To remove her gaze from her daughter's face, why would she ever want to behold anything else? When she could be taking in the sight of Suzanne's ears, like the pale folds of roses, the wing-like sweep of her tiny eyebrows, the dark hair which clings to her crown, as if painted there with a brush. There is nothing more exquisite to her than her child. The world could not possibly contain a more perfect being anywhere ever. So this is the only quote from the book that I felt, uh, I don't think I would say resonated, uh, but of course, uh, if you have children, you might have the same feelings towards your child as described in this book. I will now say what I thought of the book. Firstly, I have to say that when I read about the book, I thought to myself that this wasn't a book for me, bear that in mind, but also I'm trying to become a bookworm, so I thought, I'll have to explore many genres and many different types of books to see what I like, so this is one of the steps in that process. The first thing that hit me when I started reading the book was that it was enormously descriptive. So everything in the book is described in enormous detail. This is what put me off in the start, because everything is written over and over again about the same things. And it's quite repetitive for me, even though many things happened. So you jump back and forth in time and things are evolving. They're evolving slowly. Many people said that this was one of the saddest books they've ever read. It says on the back of the book that Hamlet is going to die. I'm not an expert on Shakespeare or Hamlet, obviously. So I didn't know that Hamlet or Hamnet was going to die. So the whole time I knew that Hamnet was going to die after reading the back of the book. And that sort of prepared me for the pain that was coming. But when the pain was coming, I didn't feel a thing. Sounds like a psychopath. But it did not in any way move me. Of course it's sad when a child dies. But it's written in a way that it's just too much. 
it's almost like a philosophical death in some way and not in a way that you could feel the pain or at least I couldn't not in reading it at least and I've read a lot of sad books so I know what it is like when reading a book that physically hurts but this didn't and of course when I read a book I want to feel something so if it's pain it can be pain but just don't give me many 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 pages of nothing and then we have the name Shakespeare because Shakespeare is never really said in the book at all so he's called many things but not Shakespeare and I think this is a way for the author to draw attention to Agnes because when reading the book you felt that you were reading about Agnes's life and you sympathized with her throughout the book at least I did but you still knew that the book was about Shakespeare I don't know if that had a huge effect at least not for me then again that's only speculation I don't know why she did it like that I'm going to talk further about my thoughts on the book but I thought that I can't do it without spoiling too much so this next part will contain spoilers Alarm! because in the book there are many loose threads and there were so many times when I read things in the book and I thought, ooh, now we're getting somewhere. And then nothing happened. Nothing at all. Ever. You read a critically acclaimed book and you think that this has something. And you all the time just wait for something to happen. Something good. You wait for it. The thing that got this book all its fame. It never came. So one thing is the violent grandfather. So Shakespeare's father is violent. And on several accounts this is talked about and he does violent things. At one point the grandfather hits Hamnet and Hamnet gets a flesh wound around his eye. And this is made a big point of. And later in the book it's commented. But it doesn't lead to anything. You barely hear of the grandfather after that episode. So the grandfather hits both Shakespeare and Hamnet. Everyone knows he's violent. Hamnet gets wounded. And then nothing. So why write about it? If it's not going to lead anywhere. In the start of the book, Shakespeare and Agnes are hooking up in close proximity to some apples. And it's pointed out that if these apples touch, they're going to be ruined. Because that destroys them. Fair point. And the book also says that these apples they touched while they were hooking. But then nothing. That's it. So we know the apples are being ruined. And this is pointed out. But after that, what happens to the apples? Are people going hungry? Is there someone who does not survive? My mind runs wild. But I get no answers. Of course, there are also other episodes, but in general, I sort of felt like I was waiting for things to happen all the time and new things were happening, but they really never led anywhere. So I was very disappointed several times reading this book throughout. Of course, the interesting thing about this book is traveling to a new world and a new time, which you didn't know a lot about. And you learn a few things about how things were living at that time town and city dimension is talked about a lot which I kind of enjoyed. The one thing I understand people talking about when they talk about this book is the creativity in the book because I think you have to be quite creative to make a book like this and to draw historical facts and make fiction out of it and many places in the book I thought about the creativity but as a bad book reviewer I forgot to take notes. But I can understand that point that people make about the book being a creative piece. Also, the book has a very colorful language, but it's too colorful for me. And it's too much. Too many words to describe few things. That's one of the reasons why my favorite character in this book was Agnes's brother. Because he never spent time talking too much. He also seemed like a steady guy. This is actually the first book I've read that I don't understand why people praise so much. So comment below if you have a way to persuade me. Give me things from the book you liked so I can 
try to find the joy. I gave it two out of five stars at Goodreads, my first two. When you hear me talk about it, many of you might think that why I didn't give it one star. But look at that cover. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it or disliked it, give me a thumbs up or down. Comment below if you have any thoughts on the book or if you want to slaughter my book review. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.